day I happened to read an article in Times of India. I think I was lucky now when I look back to read that article, which talked about ovarian cancer and all the symptoms and how ovarian cancer never gets diagnosed or detected much earlier. And it's always in the late stage. And it because it's in an open in the cavity in your thing, it spreads to many of your organs and you know, you lose, you lose uh, very, I mean, you lose to cancer very quickly. It's difficult to contain it and control it and heal it. And this is what I read and it was quite shocking for me at then because all the symptoms which <clears throat> that article talked about then, I had it. So I didn't waste a time. My husband was traveling. So I waited for him to return. I went to the doctor and I really told her this is my problem. And even then she told me, you just read and you imagine that you have it. Now, my doctor was that kind of a person who just believed that I was doing well because I had a busy job and I used to run all over town, all over. And then I was busy and I looked very cheerful. I didn't show the pain which I was going through. So I think it was a masking which I did or what. So she felt I was really not sick and I was using this and it was more in my mind. And anyway, I went and did the sonography and I was lucky to go to an onco immediately. You know, I never went to a gynae to treat me. I went, I had a very good friend of mine who directed me to a very good doctor. I had the best of onco surgeons, chemotherapists to actually heal me. And, and I came out of it with all the complicated, with all what I was going through. I had, it was stage three with fluid formation, which was also malignant. So I can, if anybody has gone through it, you know what it is, it is just to come out of ovarian cancer. And, and then for nine months, I was very fine. I was, had no problem. I, but I, deep down, I was not really feeling good. I was not feeling that I was top of my health. I was, I have come out of cancer and, you know, I had all sorts of fears and doubts and, and things was happening to me. And within nine months, my cancer relapsed. <clears throat> that is when I really felt miserable, not at the first time. The second time, I really felt so upset. I began crying and, you know, as if I was going to deal with cancer for the first time. And my husband told me, I think you have dealt it once. Now you can go come out of it much stronger. But that was not true. Actually, I was feeling so miserable. And I thought that I had nothing I could do to come out of it at this time. I had lost all hopes and I, I imagined the worst. I imagined me being very sick, lying in bed with those fluid formations and me going to the doctor, having to go to the doctor often. And after the surgery, the first chemo was really bad. I was just in bed with, with you know, not even able to eat a morsel of food. I was not able to drink water eat anything. I had so much of mouth ulcers. I had no energy and I was so feeling so sick and I really didn't know what to do. I was just praying, Oh God, can you help me to come out of this? What can you do? Please show me the way. And you know, when you're in trouble, that's the first thing we all do, you know? And, um, and I was just doing that. And one of my friends happened to visit me one day and uh, she gave me a book. And she said, I haven't read this book, but you can read it. Maybe it will help you for whatever you're going through now. And the book had no cover. The book had nothing. And it never really interested me to read the book at that time. And it just laid in my table for a day, in my side table for a day or two. Until she rang up the next after two days and said, hey, I'm going to come to collect the book. Have you finished reading it? That is when I just said, okay, let me read this book. Let me see what this book has. Maybe there is, a, there is something for me in this book. So I just took the book, flipped the pages, and I came across something called Inner Child. And that really connected. I connected to it. I said, Inner Child, I'm a psychologist. I'm a counselor. I've never heard something like this, Inner Child. And the book was, I read, just read the book. I read the book within two hours with tears flowing from my eyes. I just read the book. And I connected to the book so much. The book was not like this, what I, what you're seeing now. This is a new edition. That was probably a very old edition. And it didn't even have a cover. And the book was Power Within You. I'm sure many of you would have read it. And it's a wonderful book. 
I got a lot from this book. And I really felt the first thing I got after reading the book was one hope. I had lost hope then and I felt somewhere deep down, Ari, you're going to come out of this this time and you're going to be more stronger and you're going to feel so good. And that feeling really helped me to do things which I needed to do. It's like how SD Ram was talking about your whys and hows and what. I suppose I got it then, you know, and I was willing to do all what was there written in the book, whether it took I mean, it was, it was difficult, but I decided that I would do it. And, and what I got from the book was, first of all, to looking at my illness in a holistic way. It was not that I just go to the doctor and try to heal myself and come back. The doctor was only treating me. He was not helping me to heal from within. And cancer is something where you need to work from within outside. Like what Shram said as they from within outside. All our speakers have given us so many in these few days, which we can all use. And I could connect to all of them from Madhura to Rose to Bell to Captain. All of them talked all what I did to go out and come out of this cancer. And the second one was our immune system. I understood first time I was thinking of the immune system in my body, which Captain talked about. I we never really connect to this system. And that system is our, our warriors. The immune system really keeps us healthy and it keeps you away from all the sickness. And the immune system is the first system to be compromised because we don't lead the life which we are supposed to lead. And when our immune system compromises, the signals it shows your body automatically shows those signals of hair fall, dry skin, cracking, the sore throats, the headaches, which we all easily ignore by popping a pill and carrying on with life. And this is what I understood. These two things was a major takeaway from, from the book. So I realized at that time, it was not just that I do a diet change, but I need to change my entire lifestyle. And that's huge, you know, for somebody who's 40, almost 47 years, lived a life in a particular way and done things and suddenly overnight to change it because you know that's where you can uh, get control of your illness. Somewhere deep down, you know that that is you have the power and you need to do it to come out of the illness and not your doctor doctors and not anybody else. They are only treating you and they are not, ab they are not able to do anything more than that. They cannot build your immune system. You need to do it. And the understanding is our body is such an amazing, amazing instrument. We have the best thing. Nobody can make a body, I suppose. We can do everything we can create in this world, but definitely not our physical body, which is so amazing. We I mean, you look at it, it's so beautiful. It does a digestion. Whatever you eat, we digest. The blood flows from our head to foot, from foot to your head. Just imagine the law. It's so much against gravity and so many things. And so many things happen in our body without our knowledge. And we just don't bother how our body functions even for a minute, isn't it? And then the second is the emotional you. We are supposed to feel good. We are supposed to feel happy. Our body is made in such a way that we can let go of our sadness and our uh, uh, feelings of anger, everything, and feel happy within a few minutes, few seconds. We have those hormones. The endorphins, hormones are there. The feel good, which makes us feel so good within no matter of time. And the mental you, the thoughts, we have the capability to think positive, to think, feel good about ourselves, to think wonderful thoughts. And finally, the spiritual you. We have the spirit deep within us, that power which is within us, which we hardly connect because over that we have layers and layers of things which we have really not dealt with. So we have this wellness team. And who is in charge of this wellness team? It's me, isn't it not? You and the choices that we make, you know, to get back to health. It is not anybody else. It is we who are in charge and we who make those choices. So let's look at what, before we look at stress, what is health? Health for all of us is not for your disease. It is understanding our 
the true nature of ourselves, our well-being, and being able to connect deep within ourselves, and that is health. And when that is not happening to us, why? Because we are in, we have a lot of stress. And how these stresses are? The stress we can be in stress. A stress can help us to do well, and a stress. can help us to go downward so we should understand what is our stress is all about and stress is a silent killer my friends if we really do not know how the stress is taking a toll on our life until we decide to look within ourselves and what does the stress do as captain says captain said in his speech it it really affects our immune system it depletes our immune system and once our immune system breaks down our body can no longer look after ourselves and keep you healthy and this is so important so there's a lot of connection between stress illness and stress immunity and illness there is this connection and once we make this connection and we are able to understand that we can actually come out of most of our illnesses so where the knowledge that i am telling you there is a science called psychoneuroimmunology it's called pni and there are a lot of books written on this there is that molecules of emotions you can heal your life and you have healing power of illness and the anatomy of spirit all these books talk about the science of neuroimmunology of psychoneuroimmunology so it's nothing but finding the connection between psychology and your new, your nervous system and your immunology so we do have this thing of anything when we are in danger to protect ourselves when the danger is really definitely our body is secreting the ad- adrenal to help us to go and do the necessary action at that time if our stress is not real our body is secreting that in adrenal and it's affecting our immune system so when you look at stress it's multi dimensional why do you say it's multi dimensional because it's at different levels what are the levels what are the five levels the physical the emotional the mental and relation and spiritual so these are all the five levels and we need to look at all these levels now when you look at it we look at the physical stresses all the time but we don't allow ourselves to go deeper down and look at the emotional mental relational and <coughs> spiritual stresses so if you just just ask your body where i am i stressed at any time of your day your body will tell you they will give you an answer and you will come to know where are your stresses you need to have to ask anybody your physical stresses of course it's it's seen but the other ones are at a deeper layers and we need to allow ourselves to connect to it many times we don't want to do it because of various reasons so that's where we need to become allow ourselves to do that and heal that part of us so now how does these stresses affect what are these stresses and how it affects our health So let's look at the physical stresses. The physical stresses is what? How can you do deal with your physical stresses? The physical stresses is the easiest one. It's a big chunk of our stresses. So if you have heard, we all heard Madhura and Sandeepshri and and uh, Shalini talking yesterday. So they talk so much about whole plant based food and how it helps to deal with your physical stresses. So I will not go much into that. so i did a lot of it so when i read heal your life book and i saw and i read that you know he louise he healed her cancer by going to the best nutritionist and eating a whole plant based food and and she said i ate so much of raw that you know some of the names i didn't even know i just ate it and within 6 months and she did a whole lot of other work which which i'll be talking about and she said i healed the cancer and that was my take to i said okay i shall go so the first thing i did was i worked on my physical stresses i started having a whole plant based diet my next meal after reading the book was a big bowl of carrot salad because that was the only vegetable i had you know remember friends i never ate a raw meal before that i i didn't like many of the fruits so for me to eat that big bowl of salad 
I didn't think that I I found it difficult because as Ram said yesterday, the why, the how, those questions were there for me. I'm doing it to get back to health. Let me try out this. The fears, I didn't have the fear because I tried all of it. I listened to my doctor and I ate all what he said. He even told me steam an apple and eat, peel the skin and eat. I did all of it and it came back. So when I asked him why it came back, he said, we'll nip it in the bud. This time it's not so bad. And then we'll treat you and it will not come back. But that was not the answer which helped me. And I felt good listening to it. So this is a whole plant-based diet really helped me. So when I ate raw at that time, I knew I was going against my doctors because my doctors had prescribed a totally a different diet. But I took a chance because at that time I didn't know Nandita, I didn't have Sharon, I didn't have any of those helps to help me to clarify and ask. I just listened to my gut feeling. As, doc, as Shalini said yesterday, we have the two brains, uh, the brain and the gut. So I just listened to that. And that really guided me. And what I noticed was I went on total raw within a two days, you know. A person who never ate raw. So you can imagine how it must have been for me to chew those vegetables and eat them. But when I did it, you know what I found? I started feeling so good. My mouth ulcers went away. My constipation went away. And you know, I really didn't feel sick. So within two days, without taking any of those medicines, and that made me learn more about this whole plant-based diet. I would have attended a lot and a lot of workshops of Nandita's and so many of them to learn more of it. It was not that I didn't know because I already found it. It showed in my body. It was that thing of believing, trusting, and is it so, it is so good, then why people are not doing it? Why no cancer patients has this and comes out of it? So I had to be very sure before since I already do counseling and working with people, I feel somewhere I need to be very sure deep within myself that this works for people and it's going to help before I share it. So that's when I was doing is attending all these courses. And finally, I did the eCornell certified new nutrition course too. And then the next one which I did was yoga, breathing, meditation, exercise, walking. So all these things, as which Captain said, will take care of your emotional, physical stresses. So I used to walk. I used to walk so uh, 20 minutes of brisk walk in my building. That's so much. So I would do it every day. I would walk. And there were so many people who noticed me who would ask, uh, are you fine? Are you doing good? And, you know, I had so much of energy to do that. And the more you walk, the adrenal gets... Um, you get endorphins secreted and your adrenal gets, you know, balanced. So it's so important. And rest and sleep is another thing which you really need to do. As Captain said, you need to sleep that eight, nine hours, especially if you're dealing with cancer after the chemotherapy. Even if you feel good, I don't think you should be walking around. You should take rest because the more you rest, your body is at rest, your mind is at rest, all the organs, your mind, when your mind is at rest, you your body is able to heal you. So you need to rest. And, and in our sleep, our body heals a lot. <clears throat> okay. And meditation and mindful practices, which is also very important. The more, and you know, when I started meditation, I learned it first from my spiritual uh, teacher, my Vedanta teacher. And she said, it's, and we all used to say, mind bonders, we cannot meditate, and our thoughts come. She said, you must keep doing it, and one fine day, it will happen that you, are, you need to sit down to meditate. You're already in that meditation space, and that's what happens. So you need to do all of it every day. So like what yesterday, the seven habits which Ram talked about, we need to really follow to put all these practices in order. Then the second one is emotional stresses. Now, this is what we all don't really connect. It is at the deeper level and we really don't want to connect to many of them and we just suppress it. So sometimes when we suppress it, the energy has no place to move. Emotions is what? Energy in motion. So when it doesn't move, it gets blocked in some of our weakest organs and then we fall sick. 
so how is this sources of our emotional illness is what stresses are what versus our childhood wounding <clears throat> there could be many kind of woundings we had and we have carried it all our life we have not let it go we have not dealt with it we have suppressed it and all our unmet needs there'll be so many unmet needs like simple needs some of them would have been so simple that your mother would have told you that you can't go for a picnic and we would have hurt it as so much as a kid of 5 or 6 years and you would have carried it on with ourselves and it becomes so heavy for us to carry it sometimes and we don't know what to do with that the next one is our daily tensions and frictions this we all go through it and and many of the times we really do not know how to deal with them and the second one is the third one is the mental stressor now the mental stressor is at another level in our thing it's all <coughs> the thoughts at the superficial it's all the talks th- the thoughts which go on at random and at one point we have so many thoughts running our head and the inner voices so chattering mind so many times when we sit for meditation we say we cannot deal with this chattering mind thoughts go from one thought to another to another thought and all these thoughts actually helps us actually strains our immune system and we have the inner critic how many of us talk good about ourselves we always have something to find fault about ourselves we always say oh i am not good i am not i am not capable and things like that and then you have your negative voices in your head these are not your voices at childhood you had already heard it from your parents your parents would have said you're not good for this you're not good for this and these voices come up to us in various ways as we grow older and it's there within us and we really do not know how to deal with it and deeper level is our values and beliefs now these values and beliefs are also formed when we are much younger when we are about 6 7 8 when we are much younger and 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 many times we operate from these values and beliefs now these the stresses the mental and emotional stresses are 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 at a deeper level and we really don't connect to it much but they affect our immune system big time and they are all the time stressing you and the products and this adrenaline is secreted which is a high level of toxin and you tend to aff- and it tends to affect your immune system so when i look back my thoughts and emotions maybe i would have suppressed a lot of emotions and my thoughts it constantly made me feel tired it made me feel weak and though i was physically i was active i i was a vegetarian so i ate a normal vegetarian diet which everybody ate and i thought i ate the best of that food i had of course my milk and ghee once in a week so it's 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 that so it's not that i i i should have got cancer at 47 because i didn't do really really wrong because so many people have milk and they don't get cancer at all they are quite fine and they have milk till 80 years so there are people when i tell them don't have milk this is what they tell me anyway that's a different thing totally and you all understood it by attending i mean listening to all the others so so we so we think that why i've got cancer i did everything what everybody said so these when i so when i really started working my on myself from the inside out i realized my big time stresses were the mental and emotional so when you don't want your cancer to come back to you you need to work on these two levels it's so so important because many times other illnesses we are able to control with physical and having some medicines but cancer is an illness which comes back because it is at a cellular level and your body has lost its immunity so our aim is to build our immune system and make it as strong as possible so you need to work at all these levels so as louis a says a body like everything else in life is a mirror of our inner thoughts and beliefs every cell within our body responds to every thought single thought you think and every word you speak so it's so important to know what we think and what we th- talk and how you feel these are so interconnected and psycho neuroimmunology helps you to understand this and deal with it so most of louise's heal your life workshops is based on this to understand your emotion and how you are dealing with it so another source of stress is relational stress 
Now, when you look at human beings, we are all social beings. We need to connect. We need to socialize. And, and that's where we feel so good about ourselves. Now, when your relationships are very fine and you're having a good relationship in your office, in your home, you're in a well-being state. But if you have a relationship which is toxic, where you are troubled, where you feel miserable and where you are not feeling comfortable, it's going to take a toll on your health and it helps and it affects our immune system. So what are the relationship uh, stressors? Most of it, like unmet expectation from each other. We always expect ourselves to be happy from somebody else. We really do not know how to make ourselves happy by ourselves. We expect us to become happy because somebody has to make you feel happy. And the biases we have and the prejudices we carry. And then, you know, the long held grudges. You know, we are able to remember things which our parents would have done to us many years back. And still, when we talk about it, we feel upset, we feel sad, with little realizing that this is affecting our immune system. And it's so important that when we, when we deal with or understand all this and understand how we are dealing with all this, then we have money-based estrangements. There are so many times when we talk about, I have heard in my counseling, sessions, people talking about how somebody cheated somebody and how, uh, okay, that incident has happened, but what it has left behind in you, how you feel about it when you, when you go back to it. So these are the ones which uh, affect your immune system, you are stressed out. So these all become your stresses, which is all deep down within you. It's not seen in the outside. Uh, it's like the, like the iceberg, you know, you have the, the glazier, you have the iceberg, you have the thing which is seen on top and deep down you have so much of ice is there deep down. It's the same way, you know, deep down you have all this. So you have the conscious mind, then you have the unconscious and the super conscious. And if you operate more from your conscious and super conscious mind, I think we would be better human beings. But most of the time we we are tuned to operate from just from our conscious mind. So we access only 10% of our potential. The moment we allow ourselves to go deeper within and work in all these layers, we operate from a different space. And that's what is so important. So when I look at cancer as a turning point, I would say that can, the more you allow your cancer, deal with your cancer by going into all these secret spaces which you never like to deal with is where your healing happens. And the last is a spiritual stressor. Now, this is a stressor also is most, mostly ignored. <clears throat> like many of us are happy at some time we change our life and we do things differently and we accept it and we're okay with it. But many of us feel, feel resistance towards the things happening around us and that creates a lot of stress. Now, what is your spiritual stressor sources? It's not about believing in God or praying to God or doing any of those rituals. It's nothing to do with that. But after some time, when you ask yourself, when you're doing many things, it not you feel authentic with yourself? Are you integrated with your values? Many of the times we do so many rituals, which we don't even connect to it. And sometimes we feel, oh my God, this is stressing me so much. And, you know, and we just do it as a matter of, you know, habit or we are used to doing it and things like that. Then there are so many essential questions. When we start asking all these, then we must understand where we are stressed spiritually. Where is our spiritual stressors? Like, who am I? My life purpose. Does life really matter to me? And then there'll be a time when you're really not connected to all the materials which is connected to you and you want something more. So that is when you need to look at it and ask yourself, what is it I want now? So that's that helps you to connect to your deeper part of yourself. And, you know, that's where your, you know, the growth or the evolution or the healing happens within you. So what are the stress buses? Now I talked about so much about stress. Now, how do we deal with these stresses? What are the stress busters which we can do as a patient sitting at home and don't know what to do and where to go, where to take help? There are so many things which we can do, which helps us to feel good. And, you know, work with all these, uh, uh, work with the adrenal, which is secreting and allow the endorphins to be 
secreted, the feel-good hormone to be secreted within your body. So what are what were my stressors when I went through cancer? So my first thing was when I read Heal Your Life book, my first thing was, wow, this workshop I must attend. Because that was something the workshop talked about. Louise A. talked about it. And then she said, in our two-day workshop, we do all this. And I and at 2008 or 9 or 10 when it was happening, there was not many Heal Your Life teachers. I never heard of anything being conducted like that. And I just left it. But I just thought to myself, like today Madhura would talk about affirmations. So Louise A. talks about a lot about affirmations. So I started affirming. That, you know, first of all, I started affirming whether I connected to it, whether I believed in it. I just believed what she said. I started doing it and I affirmed that I must attend this workshop sometime. And you won't believe it. One day I happened to read Life Positive magazine and I found this workshop happening in Delhi. And I said, wow, I should go and attend this. I was not feeling so well. I was not healthy, but I went. I decided to take a flight and go and attend the workshop. And that really helped me. So there were two, three healing workshops I attended during the time when I was sick. Another healing workshop I attended with the Cancer Patients Association. And, you know, somewhere that is where I understood how to look at my cancer. After reading the book, I attended the workshops and that helped me a lot to take me to my deeper layers because there are so many things I know has happened in my life and I was okay with it. But I never knew that those were creating my... Uh, uh, stresses in a different way and compromising on my immune system. Then forgiveness. Forgiveness is another thing, you know, even if you're not, able, it's not about forgiving somebody else. It's, you know, forgiving yourself to move from that space. So when you forgive yourself, you start secreting those endorphins in your body and you start building that immune system in your body. So forgiveness, and if you cannot, as Louise says, you cannot forgive, just say willing to forgive. So start your journey with willing to forgive. So when I really forgave, like I remember when this happened to me, when I went for a workshop with my spiritual guru in, a, in Kerala, I was sitting in this temple. And when I really forgave my dad, what I felt was there was a surge of love for my the, the two other men in my life, my grandfather and my husband. You know, it was a different way of connecting to them from then. So it's, it's beautiful. So when you forgive, you know, it becomes so beautiful. And the gratitude, gratitude journal. This is something so beautiful, like Santeshri has told you. It's something which I did every day. And it's so nice to write every day or two, three gratitude. You may not feel so good, but it's okay to write that, you know, I felt good. The sister took care of me while giving me the chemo. The doctor came and visited me, you know, and those things actually make you feel much better. Then you can go for coaching I, and you can do your, I did a lot of inner child therapy because I had a lot of childhood issues which I needed to deal with. And then you can do ho no ho ho no pono. Go on Google, read about this Hawaiian technique. It's so beautiful. It just has four simple words. I love you. I forgive you. Thank you. I'm sorry. And you know, so, and you, and your body knows how to deal with it. And you really start shifting from the space you are to another space. Then you can join laughter therapy. Laughter therapy is so good. When I do sessions with my clients, I tell them, go to the bathroom and laugh. It's so good. Just laugh. We hardly know how to laugh now. We don't even have smiles in our face. So the more you laugh, the endorphins are secreted. So these are all so simple things. You need to have to go to somebody to do it. You can sit at home and do it. And it really helps to build your immune system. And then you have dance movement. As Captain said, just put music and dance. Your body moves. It secretes the endorphins and build your immune system. It's so important to do it. Put any song. As Captain says, put Tamil songs and dance. Yes, that's the best thing to do. I never used to dance, you know, and I joined a dancing class. Of course, I was not regular and I could not dance. But at least I learned to move my body. Like I can put a music and dance now. So that's so important. Then you have another, the deeper level, like I talked about psycho neuroimmunology, NLP, cognitive behavior therapy, EFT, all talks about, helps you to deal at that level. They're all that psycho PNI methods they use to do it. So it's all psycho spiritual healing, which happens. And then last is affirmations. Affirmations are really 
wonderful thing to do and i started it from the time when i was unwell and my my favorite and the first time after i attended the heal your life workshop for the first time i had these affirmations made for myself what are they if you want you all can read it along with me and see how you feel i love and approve of myself is the first one which i kept telling initially i didn't connect to it at all then slowly slowly i started the more i worked within myself the more i could approve myself and love myself so that happens and you don't need other people to love you you don't need other people to approve you 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 are sorted out you feel sorted then it's trusting life i am safe it's such a nice affirmation to do now because in the times in the present situation if you do it you really feel good so i trust life i am safe so i kept telling that and i didn't have those stresses when i went for chemo or those ct scans pet scans they are all so scary and so it helped me to go through that machine being safe and being at peace with myself then i am willing to change now we learn so many things and we do it we don't do it like now 3 days we have heard so many things from uh, all of all the speakers shalini madhura intermediate fasting it's not easy to do all that but when you keep telling yourself i'm willing to change you will stop eating the grain you will stop drinking that coffee and you know things will happen so when i kept saying i'm willing to change i enjoyed eating that bowl of salad i enjoyed drinking the green smoothies the juices and you know and i was finding results so when you do it you find results and you're more motivated to do it and i kept telling every cell in my body is healthy energized and healed so it's the cancer starts from the cell so the more you connect to your cells and keep telling yourself that i am good my health my cell is energized you actually start feeling good and anybody can do it is not only you need to be a cancer patient to do it it's because we all have cells and we want our cells to be energized so my learnings from my cancer was that <clears throat> it's after all a cell so when i look at it now it's a cell that cell just didn't know how to die i just needed uh, to look deeper within myself and i needed to go and i had need to deal with it and you know it's 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 so good like i would look back and say it was i was blessed because all my organs major organs were fine and everything was fine so when the cancer was removed my only thing was that i need to look after myself that it doesn't come back for that i just needed to i understand my body's in in a healing ability and i needed to build my immune system so isn't it very simple to do that <clears throat> it's not very easy it's not very difficult it's easy to do it you just need to be watchful of what you eat what you put into your system and what you think what you feel and how you relate with people and what do you feel deep with it if you are able to do it i think you can come out of cancer and of course it it works for any other illness too but most of the illness when you're changing your diet like diabetes blood pressure you already are quite well but to sustain it probably to do it continuously and follow the sharan way and me <clears throat> a person to share this knowledge with others and be a part of sharan because sharan needs people all over the world to spread this knowledge you can do even all the other things so that you are in top of your health you are in that wellness space and you can have a life of attitude an attitude of gratitude feeling so wonderful loving yourself to live a healthy lifestyle so all this happens to you it becomes something which is which is like a bonus or like a gift to you you are able to connect deep within yourself and connect to the compassion the love and all that that is within you and you are able to operate from that space all the time and so something really beautiful happens to you and it's worth worth doing it and it's worth attending something to work at at a deeper level so thank you any questions